Welcome to Redeemed Faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you turn down number two a little bit? It's, it's too loud. Hallelujah. Don't want to run everybody out the room today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. I don't know about you, but today is a great day to have a great day. Because the Lord is good, his mercy endures forever. Amen. That's right. Give God a hand praise for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to read a scripture this morning from Psalms 121. 121. It says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Hallelujah. I love that word this morning. If you can't find anybody else you can run to in a time of need, when you go going through a situation in your life and there's nobody else there for you, you can always call on the Lord. He promises, hallelujah, to be there for you and gave us the right and the privilege to come before his presence with thanksgiving, enter to his courts with praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, Father, this morning, we thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to gather in this place. We thank you, Lord God, for your power working in our lives, oh God, to will and do according to your good pleasure. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, God, but you promise to deliver them out of them all. We come today, oh God, interceding on behalf of our brothers and sisters who have been afflicted, God, who are in the hospitals, convalescent homes, bedridden in their houses, God. The doctors have shook their head, they're giving up on them, God. We come in the name of Jesus just to say thank you, Lord God, that you're faithful to your word, oh God. You're faithful to hear your children's cry. You're faithful to answer us, God, and deliver. And we thank you, Lord God, that you're on our side as the reigning king. This morning, God, we call on the name of the Lord because we found out, Lord God, that when things are going wrong in our lives, there's nobody else we can call on but the name of Jesus. And we come to say thank you, Lord God, for answer prayer. We thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. We thank you, oh God, for the impartation of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that you're changing our lives from the inside out. Blow our minds today, oh God. Blow our minds that we get the mind of Christ that you, God, would have your way in us, God. We thank you. Lord, we invite your presence in this place today. That you would sit on the throne as the lion of the tribe of Judah. We want to hear your voice roar, oh God, today that the enemies would scatter at the sound of your voice. We want to hear you move, oh God, in this place, oh God, and see you move as we hear your voice. We feel your presence, God, moving in our lives. That strongholds are being broken. That shackles being loosed. That minds are being regulated. The broken hearts being mended. We want to feel you move, oh God. That our lives will be changed, oh God, to become more submissive to your Lordship and your authority. Forgive us, God, for the times we failed to trust you. Forgive us, God, for the times we walked away from you, God, and became rebellious. Forgive us, God, for the times we doubted your word, God, when we know, Father God, there's no other God like you in all the earth. You've proven yourself over and over in our lives that you're still God. I lift up Pastor Terry this morning and Jesse, God. 
We speak healing over them, God, over my mother, God, who the doctors and gave up on. Father God, we speak healing, God, over Deacon Cannon, God, and many others, God. We decree and declare that you said, oh God, that I will bless my people with abundant peace and they shall enjoy my security. You decreed that I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. And we invite you to come in, God, with your healing power, God, with your saving power, that you save the lost souls, that you quicken the dead, oh God, and cause them to live. Somebody is broken in their spirit. They're spiritually dead, oh God, and they need a resurrection. God, we thank you for the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken our bodies and make us alive in you, God, that we can be an outward expression of your glory in the earth, oh God, that many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. And we thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for financial favor, for blessings, increase on the house today, oh God, over our shepherd, for all the things he's done for many people, God, him and his wife, oh God, that you bless them tremendously, God. As they continually pour out in people's lives, oh God. You restore double-fold blessing, God, back to them, oh God. And because we're connected to the shepherd, God, we all will receive a proper reward, God, because of our diligence. You told us in your word, God, without faith, it is impossible to please you that those who come to you must believe that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And we come seeking your face, O oh God, and not your hand, O oh God, that you would have your way in our lives, O oh God. Those who have businesses, God, that you cause it to prosper. Those, Father God, who start a business, Give them a vision, God, to cause it to come into manifestation. We thank you, oh God, for the right connection, the right relationship that the business will get off the ground. God, we thank you for redeemed faith, oh God, for every member, God. That when they come into this place, oh God, they come with expectancy that you will speak a rhema word into all of our lives, oh God to empower us, to strengthen, to provoke us, to change us, to become more like your righteousness. And we'll be sure to give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord in here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good. You believe that today? That the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. We praise your name, O oh God. We magnify you. We give you glory, God. And we thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We had, on yesterday, the home going for Sister Christine Wilder. Beautiful home going service. God was in this place. And I tell you, Great worship, great songs came forth to promote God's glory in the house. And I tell you, if you were in this place yesterday, you would have felt the fire of God in the atmosphere moving on your life. Because God moved and he spoke a great word from our pastor. 
And I want to let you know today, whatever it is that you need from the Lord, you're going to have an expectancy. You're going to have faith. You're going to believe that God can do it. Whatever it is you're expecting God to do in your life, you've got to believe for yourself. I can't believe for you. I can believe with you. But you got to have the God kind of faith. Our scripture every Sunday says, have faith in God. When you have faith in God, God will do something supernatural in your life. Supernatural. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. If you know it, sing it with me. In what you let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. And I lift my voice to worship. Of the Lord 
And when you come before God, you have to come with an open heart and allow the Lord to come inside of you to fill you with the power and authority of the Word of God. And when you begin to speak the Word of God, your situation has to change. When you speak the word of God, your business has to prosper. When you speak the word of God, your life has to change. Because we worship you, Jesus. Because we worship you, Jesus. See, when you invite God to come in, what he does, he dispatches his angels to come right where you are and they begin to fill your house and God's glory will begin to be invited in. Just like when God came down to meet with Moses in the tent of meetings, God came down and it said a cloud of smoke, it filled the whole house where Moses stood and God says his glory begin to engulf the tabernacle and begin to fill the whole place people had to bow down they had to bow down they had to bow down and when you bow down you're telling God here I am to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say that you are my God. Because I want to worship you, the reason I can say, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, cause you're worthy, Jesus. Oh, Lord. One more time, I exalt thee, and I exalt thee. 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 Come on forth. Praise team, come on forth. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Woo, Jesus. Thank you. My God. Put your hands together in this place. How many came to praise the Lord today? I don't know what you come to do. Let me hear you say. I don't know what you come to do, but I know what I come to do. Let me hear you say. But I know what I come to do. I 
don't know what you come to do. Let me hear you say, I don't know what you come to do, but I know what I come to do. Let me hear you say, but I know what I come to do. I come to clap my hands. My hands. I come to clap my hands. My hands. I come to clap my hands. My hands. I come to clap my hands. To do my day, I come 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 to clap my head, 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 I come to do my day, I come to do my day, help me do my day, I come to do my day, come on, put your hands together on this place. Y'all should know it by now, so just re repeat after me. Hey, say I don't know what you come to do. Let me hear you say I don't know what you come to do. But I know what I come to do. Let me hear you say it. But I know what I come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Let me hear you say, I don't know what you come to do, but I know what I come to do. Let me hear you say, but I know what I come to do. I come to clap my hands. My hands. I come to clap my hands.
together. Hey. Put your hands together. Hey. Put your hands together. 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 Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hey. We gonna switch this up a little bit because I just feel it in my soul to have a little church on, for a few seconds. Well, Hallelujah. Praise him, praise him. Hey. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. All right, take that down for us a little bit, y'all. Nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Come on, help us sing. Well, he picked me up and told me to run on. Pick me up and told me to run on. Pick me up and.
Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody rock me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Can't nobody fix me like Jesus. give God another praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to be a blessed in the house of the Lord on today. I pray that you have your envelopes. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. You know, there are some great people Pastor Hibbler that can do real good negotiations. They can negotiate themselves into something and they can negotiate, negotiate themselves out of something. But when it comes to your salvation, when it comes down to your salvation, there's no, absolutely no negotiation when it comes down to your situation. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. I've told y'all, told the ones, told the ones that were here on yesterday during the homecoming about the guy that said, when I get straight, I'll come to church. Hallelujah. I I saw. He need an envelope right here, right here. We got it anymore, amen. 
Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying in my spirit that make no mistake, your salvation means a lot. Your character, people look at you and they'll judge you by your character. God sees your character. When I come to church, I'm not coming to put on a front. I'm not coming to, to put on an act, but I'm coming to give God all the glory. And I say, God, if I can't give you my best, then I might as well not even give anything because one of the things I've learned that we'll go to work and the job expect for you to give your best. As a matter of fact, a lot of the big corporate jobs, Fortune 500 jobs there, they put you on a time. You'll be in time by how much you can do in an hour. If you don't meet that time in that hour, then when it comes down to your evaluation, you're either gonna be terminated because you're not, you're not fulfilling the needs that the company needed at that time, or they're gonna tell you to pump up your stuff, or they're gonna give you a small raise instead of that big raise that you're expecting. Because sometimes we can put everything we got on a job, expecting to receive a nice bonus, expecting to receive uh, a great increase from the job or whatever, uh, or expecting to get a promotion from the job. But until you learn how to put your all in God, you would always get denied those certain things that you're so used to getting. God said, I don't want a piece of you. I want, if you give, if you claim to give me your job 100%, God said, I want 110. God said, I want 110% of what you're putting in. So your efforts should be endless when it comes to giving God glory and giving God praise. It should be an endless praise. David said it like this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Mm. I want y'all to hear me saying that his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I turn my nightmares into a prayer, a praise session. <laughs> Amen. Let us all stand. We're going to follow the direction of our usher.
standing to your feet if you can. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for the increase. Now I want you to point to yourself and say, increase cometh to me now. Increase cometh to me now. Increase comment to me now. Father, we ask that you bless this offering and the purpose in which it's going to be used. I found you to be a door opening God because you're God over everything. I know that even while I'm praying, you're answering and opening doors right now. So God, as we give unto you we thank you for the increase that's going to come back to us we know that God because we have not held back from you you won't hold back from us somebody say in Jesus name amen now let's get a little radical anybody ready to get a little radical you know Pastor Charles, I, I came for expansion. February is going to be an expansion, a, a, a big expansion on everything that I put my hands on, everything that I believe God to do. I'm believing God for expansion. I'm stepping out, hallelujah, on faith. Hallelujah. I'm stepping out on faith. I, I, I can't see it, but I, I believe that God heard my prayer and that God is about to do something supernatural. I need for you to just reach your hand, put your hand on something because God is about to spend something. Hallelujah. I want you to say, Lord, and Lord, my territory. I, I, I don't know what you want God to put in your territory, but I, I know what I want God to do for me. Somebody say, Lord, enlarge my territory. Hallelujah. Take one more deep breath. Because whatever you want God to do, I'm believing that God going to release it in the atmosphere. And whatever God releases in the atmosphere, hallelujah, it can't come back until it manifests that which he has spoken. Somebody say, Lord, enlarge my territory. Now, won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Now, give God a radical prayer. Now bless his name. Oh, bless his name. I, 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 I came to start a fight today. I came to start some trouble. Somebody give God praise. Somebody shout like you lost your mind. I came to support the Lord today. For he alone is worthy. Yeah, yeah, 
expansion this is what God is about to do right here this is what he's about to do right here so 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 in order for the wall in order for the building to be expanded some walls have to be torn down And, 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 and new structure, new beams, and, 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 and new plumbing, and new electricity, and, and new this, and new that, and elevation, hallelujah. And when God get through with this, we'll be able to do bigger and better things. Bigger. Anybody want to do bigger? Anybody want to do better? Things. Hallelujah. Not only for us that are here and the members of Redeemed Faith Fellowship, but I'm talking about people in the community. Open up different resource centers. Opening up different programs. At the school programs. To empower our young people. And to, to, to take our Bible study and our studying process to another level. I'm talking about a library full of Bible knowledge. Hallelujah. I, I got so many books in my office right now. I can't wait to open the part of the library. So everybody that want to spend their, 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 their perspective of our ministry in the gospel. They can begin to read and study. And not just going off of what. The preacher is preaching. Because we have to show ourselves, we got to study to show ourselves approved. I can't preach what April had preached on last Sunday. I remember what she preached, but I can't allow that to be only thing I need to know. My faith has to be bowed down into the word of God. <laughs> Because I'm finding out that people are developing neck problems at young ages. Because they're, they're looking at more social media than looking down at the word of God. Because the word of God, when you're reading that word, that word, that word, that word, that word will bounce back and hit you in your spirit. And open up doors. Open up access points that been closed and locked down. God said, I'm not, I, I don't want to just expand the building. God said, if I expand the building and the mind ain't expanding, then I might as well not expand the building. So therefore, this building, while it's being expanded, and before it get expanded, I want to expand your thinking on the word so that when the enemy comes in like a flood, not only will God lift up a standard, you'll be able to go in your word and say, yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. For thou art with me, thou rod and thou staff, it should comfort me thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies and you can you can quote those scriptures and, and I don't care what kind of order you put it in it's the word of God hallelujah thou anointed my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy 
shall follow me all the days of my life. So when you're depressed, goodness and mercy is right there. When your anxiety is attacking you, goodness and mercy is right When your back is up against the wall, you ain't got to worry about it. Because goodness and mercy is right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord another praise. I was I was thinking of I, I was thinking of something the other night and I was just preparing myself for so much that I'm expecting for God to do and I was reading and matter of fact it was, it was so amazing that when I opened my Bible it opened right to the scripture where it said they that wait upon the Lord the book of Isaiah and I begin to begin to talk to the Lord during that time and say, God, waiting don't feel good. It don't feel good. It don't feel good to wait. But God began to tell me, he said, he said, when you read that, he said, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings. And so, and it reminded me of the eagle. It reminded me of one of the most, that's the most, one of the powerful birds in the air. And I believe I said this before, is that whenever a crow would jump on the back of an eagle, some of us got a crow on our back and it's pecking at the eagle's neck. The eagle don't fight back. What the eagle does is that he clams higher because he knows that what's inside of that crow, that crow can't handle the level I am capable of handling. See, when the crow is on your back, I want to show you something. When things are coming down on you in order for you to get it off of your back, you got to keep climbing higher. I want to show you. See, because the eagle knows that the higher I go, the crow is going to lose conscious. God said your enemy is going to lose conscious. It's going to lose conscious and it's going to fall right off of the back of the eagle. So the eagle knows that all I got to do is take my trouble high. So, and one of the, and one, and one of the, one of the most interesting things about an eagle is that they go through a shedding process. They'll shed their own old feathers. And this is where the waiting process come in at. So they find themselves a high place, not a snake, not any other creature can come bother them. Sometimes you got to find a hiding place. Anybody, anybody got their own hiding place already? I mean, you got to go and get your closet and just like, this is my, this is my, this is my sanctuary the hiding place for me to renew my strength. Sometimes you can't even allow your spouse to get access to your hiding place. Because while, 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 you in your hi, while you're in your closet, your spouse should be out there praying with you on the outside. While, while you're consecrating yourself and believing God for something greater, that I just need for you to be outside praying for me, praying with... Uh, See, because here's the thing, that when we get our wings back, now I can fly even higher. 
Because we, we look at things like this, the older we get, the slower we get. That's why the doctor would tell you, exercise. Get yourself together. Change your eating habits. Get yourself together. Get yourself together. Because we never know. We never know. We never know. We never know. Because some of us, we're so used to the crow in our life pecking on our neck that we, we became numb to it. We're okay with it now. But God said it's time to go higher. Mm. I'm saying that because somebody's anointing, somebody, somebody's about to recognize the anointing over their life in this place. Somebody's a recognize, about to recognize the supernatural power that been bringing them through. Somebody is about to recognize, hallelujah, they no longer need to separate themselves. They need to draw closer. There's an anointing over. There's an anointing in this place right now that somebody's about to give birth to some oil. Somebody's about to give birth to some oil. Hallelujah. We, 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 we got some oil making saints in this building. You don't even know it. Hallelujah. You've been crushed. You've been walked on. You've been talked about. You've been misunderstood. But all of that. Hallelujah. So I'll take you walking all over me because... You're just pushing all the oil out. And while I'm dripping, while, while, while I'm dripping in oil, you don't need to sit in my owl. Because if you sit in my owl, my oil just might affect you. Hallelujah. You may not, God, you may not recognize your anointing right now, but the oil that's in my life uh, is about to set the pews on fire. And if you don't want to see this kind of Holy Ghost fire, you need to give God a praise so you can produce your life. Listen. I, 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 I want I want to say I want to say something. I want the choir. Y'all y'all get ready to come on up. I want to say something that never give up on anybody. Try to understand where they're coming from. Your oil will affect them. I want to make their situation so slippery. I want to make their situation so slippery that when I walk past them, they're going to lose their footing because my anointing is dripping. I want the generations behind me to understand the anointing that's over my life in the level that God is trying to take me to. So the oil in my life is going to make my area slippery so that when the enemy tries to sneak up behind me, he's going to slip. But can I, can I, 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 I Y'all can take a seat, but I, I just want to sit, sit down and, and share one thing with you. And one of my brothers said something to me. One of my brothers said, and this is for mothers, fathers, and those of you plan on having children in the future. They said something. He said something to me that shook me to the core and I told him I said I was totally the opposite this is what he told me and this is what I want y'all to understand that uh, when I talk about generational curses and what you do in front of your kids it affects them something happened last night and then while we were talking, 
this morning, earlier today, on my way to the church, he began to say something that I said, wow, so that explains it. We begin to talk about my mother and some things that as a child we see our father do. And we try to incorporate that in our relationship and in our marriage. And we find out that it was actually the wrong thing. And so this brother told me that because what happened last night, so I got to give you, give you this so you understand that something happened last night, a domestic dispute happened with one of my nephews, I'm not calling the name, and his girlfriend. And so he, he, we began to talk on that situation. And he said, man, I didn't like that. And I said to myself, to this brother, I said, well, man, you've done that. Like it was a good thing to do. And he told me this right here. He said, bro, I only did that because I thought when daddy was doing it, that was how you treat a woman. That was how you're supposed to keep a woman, by doing that very thing. By, by, by making sure they don't leave, by, by doing the things that uh, fighting on them and beating up on them and stuff like that. I thought that's the way you keep a woman. I thought because I saw daddy do it. And I said, man, that, I said. He said, he said, I'm for real, bro. He said, I'm for real because when I saw dad do that to mom, I thought, literally thought, that's how you treat a woman. And that's how you keep a woman. And I'm telling you this because a lot of, a lot of the, a, a big majority of the time, it's because what they saw daddy do we're going to break that chain we're going to break it we're going to break it or it may not have been daddy it might have been stepdaddy or mama's boyfriend doing it and mama sat there and took it and, and was okay with it but, but the son looked at it like this is how you treat the woman to keep the woman so I'm saying this whatever you do in front of your sons and your daughters because your daughter can feel like the same thing. This is how it's supposed to happen because mama took it from dad and didn't do nothing about it. So therefore, my boyfriend, I'm expecting for him to do that. So, and then on top of that, then on top of that, I, I, I said to myself, you know what? Mama never told you that it wasn't right what he was doing. And because she didn't say that it wasn't right, you believe that it was right. I said, I was just totally the opposite. I said, I never put my hand on a woman. Don't want to be in no groups of relationships. But I did pick up some characteristics of my dad that my wife put me in check way in the beginning of the marriage. Saw my mama cook, clean, do all the housework, take care of the kids. That's what I thought she was supposed to do. That's what I thought. I would never touch her, never put a hand on her, I'd walk out, do whatever the case may be. But I never touched her. So, but when she told me, no, that is not how it's supposed to be. So therefore, I started helping her as much as I could to take care of the house. The house was easy, but me and my job was kind of difficult because she was always at home with the girls and I'm always on the road. And we worked that thing out. But today, my daughters, they can tell you that I, they never saw us lay hands on each other. Matter of fact, they probably never really saw us get into a deep argument. But I'm saying this to somebody today that if your children saw it, you need to go and let them know that that was wrong. I took it and give and, and let them know, say I took it or whatever the case may be. I took it because this, why, X, Y, Z. Some women back in the days, they took that because that man was their only resource. So they was the only way they was going to pay their rent, only way they was going to do this. So back in the days, women's done that. And I learned that from my mother. That part, she told me. And But today, no, nah, the devil is a lie. Somebody give God praise.
I just had to make that known. Come on, give God praise because we're breaking generational curses in 2023. We're going to make it known that the devil, you, I, 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 I'm giving you your eviction today. And when I leave this church today, that problem that I had that I just couldn't seem to solve, I tried and I tried. I kept getting deeper involved, but I gave it over to Jesus and he made it all right. You get my eviction notice. I quit. Come on, praise team. Woo. Come on, praise team. Let him have it. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to bring some of y'all a piece of paper next Sunday because we're going to sign it and let them know that uh, you're, you're being evicted. Hallelujah.
came for a word today. I just hear a few hands, but how many came for a word? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, listen. I'm going to move my Bible to the side. I've asked uh, Pastor Charles to be ready on today and believe me I pray some of y'all got y'all bulletproof vests on hallelujah hallelujah I don't think some of y'all heard me thank you Jesus but I'm putting it like this that he got those weapons he, he got those vest piercing bullets because that, is there anything too hard for God amen is there anything too hard for God? Hallelujah. Because some of y'all built walls, but, but, but I serve a God who's able to tear down the biggest wall. He tore down the walls of Jericho just with a shout. Hallelujah. Anybody need some walls tore down today? And if you want some walls torn, I need you to put on a shout today. I need you to stand to your feet and receive. Hallelujah. The man of the hour... The man of the hour, Pastor Charles Emery. Let's give God praise for him. Come on, put your hands together. If you came to receive, put your hands together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I did, you may be seated. I did ask uh, Minister LaShonda to bring a word today, but her, her voice is messing up today. We want to give her a break and catch her next time. But we want to keep them lifted up in prayer. This coming Saturday would be the homegoing service for her auntie that passed away a couple of weeks ago. We want to definitely keep them lifted up, the Cole family, Hill family, because it is a 
time where a lot of people are slipping away. But it's your soul anchored in Jesus today. Because if you're not anchored, when the Lord calls your name, will you be ready? Or will he say to you, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, I know you not. I don't want to be in that number. I want to be in the number where the saints go marching in. And the Lord says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. I want to try to do this song, Be Grateful, just in my spirit this morning. Be Grateful by Walter Hawkins. Do a little bit of this. Be Grateful. Be Grateful. God has not promised sunshine that always is going to be just like this. But a little rain mixed with God sunshine a little pain makes me appreciate the good time be grateful be grateful be Grateful, God has not promised me sunshine, that's not the way it's going to be. But a little rain mixed with God's sunshine, a little pain makes me appreciate the good time. So be, be. Grateful, be grateful, be grateful. God desires to feel your longing. Every pain that you feel, he feels them just like you, but he can't afford to let you feel only good that you can appreciate. The good time be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, so be. Be grateful, oh, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. Be 
grateful, be grateful, God desires to feel your longing, every pain that you feel. He feels them just like you, but he can't afford to let you feel only good, that you can't appreciate the good times, so be be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, be be grateful, be, be grateful. Be. There's somebody one stop for you. You gotta be grateful. Be. Someone else desires be to be in your shoes. Be grateful. Be, be grateful. Be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, grateful. You know, sometimes when we go through troubles, lose a loved one, our hearts are broken, we become ungrateful. We complain. We'll murmur, we'll question God, because we begin to doubt God's ability to bring us through the tough times. The songwriter says, somebody else is worse off than you who desires to be in your shoes because it's not as bad as things really appear with the natural eye when you're looking through the eyes of faith. When I look at my condition, my situation through the eyes of the Lord, he reassures me that he's on my side. That none of these things can separate me from the love of Christ. And when you get the revelation of how much God loves you. Be grateful. Lord, I just want to let you know I'm grateful today. Sometimes I get stubborn. Sometimes I get rebellious. But today I want you to know, God, I'm grateful. I will lose my mind. A long time ago, if it wasn't for your grace, if it wasn't for your mercy, I would have gave up a long time ago. So be grateful, be grateful. Even when your body's afflicted sometimes. I know a doctor who can heal all manner of diseases. I know a Savior who feels my suffering. See, my mother's in the hospital as of yesterday. And the doctor said we can't do nothing else for her. She's at stage four of congestive heart failure. But I serve a God of miracles. I serve a God of breakthrough. I choose to believe the report of the Lord. And I still come to tell God I'm grateful for my mother.
who's a praying mother who endured many years of suffering, but yet she's taught me how to be grateful. So I come to tell you, Jesus, I'm grateful for my mother's life on this earth. I'm grateful for my father who can't speak. I'm grateful because you kept them a mighty long way. I'm grateful, Jesus. I'm grateful, Jesus. I'm grateful, Jesus. Mm. Be, be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. If you will, please stand out of the room as we go into a word of prayer. I'm going to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, your word tells us that there is no good thing that you would hold from those who walk uprightly before you. For you are the sun and you're the shield. And you give grace and glory. Lord, we come before your throne in this moment to break the bread of life. Ask God that you word my heart as a tablet engraved with your word. That you would speak my divine revelation. A word we all need to hear of hope. A message of love. A message of encouragement. When we're broken, when we're discouraged, we feel lost and lonely. Did you restore that hope and let us know everything going to be all right? Clear our minds, clear our hearts to be in a position to receive your word gracefully. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I just felt that this morning God is trying to provoke us to come with a grateful heart to our pastor, Prophet Young, Pastor Lane, to all of you, our father's children. He says, suffer the little children to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven. And one thing about God when you come like a child, God says, I'll open my arms up to you. I'll receive you. And I will minister to you right in the area of your life where you need him the most. We have loved ones who need God right now. Some in the hospital. They, we, they need him right now. And God says today, I'm going to meet you right where you are. So in St. Luke chapter 5, hallelujah, Jesus, verse 12, St. Luke chapter 5, verse 12. And it came to pass when he was in a certain place, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seen Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. 
And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man. But go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. If I was to have a subject today, it would be a cry for help. A cry for help. You may be seated. A cry for help. In Luke chapter 5, it begins with an encounter where Jesus saw a few disciples before they became disciples. They were three men who were fishermen. And this is the call of his first disciples. And as he approached them, they've been fishing. If you know the custom, during this time, that's how they made their living as fishermen. They would gather the fish and sell it to the marketplace to make money. And as they were fishing, they didn't catch anything for many hours. And Jesus comes along and he tells them, launch out into the deep. Let down your nets for a drop. So if Jesus gives a command, even though you done done everything you can do, you've been in a situation you can't seem to never get out of it, it's like your finances are depreciated, your health is falling apart, and everything in your life, it just does not seem like it's going to work. So they're fishing all night long. And says Simon answering, saying unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. That's an excuse, right? So we toiled all night and have taken in nothing. But nevertheless, at thy word, I will do it. I'll let down my net. And we have to get in position in ourselves that when God begins to speak to your situation, Lord, nevertheless, but at thy word, I'm going to let go of what I'm holding on to. Your neck could be your problem. Your neck could be your situation. Your neck could be a physical condition. And God says you let go of your neck that's empty and let go of all the stuff that you've been holding in your neck. I'm going to empty it out and fill it with what you need. So we become complacent and we have many excuses. The reason why I can't let go of my neck. Lord, I, I done toiled in, in this broken marriage. I done toiled, oh God, on my job and it's just confusion on my job. Every time I go to work, I hate going to work because they always talk about me, God. Someone's always picking at me. I don't know what to do, God. I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired and I, I need your help. And God, if you don't speak, I'm going to lose my mind up in here, up in here. But nevertheless, at thy word, I'm going to let down my net. Because I know there's a reason behind what you told me to do, even though I can't see it. Did you think they saw a drought when Jesus said let down the net? They didn't see that. Until Peter confirmed at thy word. Immediately, the miracle began to take place. I come to tell you today, your miracle's in motion. Your miracle's in motion. What you believe in God for in your life, in your ministry, is in motion. But it's only according to your faith when you tell God, nevertheless, at thy word, I'm going to let down my net. And that's what God is looking for. A heart that's surrendered, a heart that's yielded, a heart that's willing to obey his word. So many times we hear a prophetic word spoken in our lives and we resist it. 
Because, no, that ain't for me, God. I, I, I'm not going through no storms. I'm not going through no persecution. I'm not going through no more troubles. I'm not going through nothing else, God, because I don't believe that prophetic word that I'm going to go through a storm, but you're going to deliver me. You're going to bring me out, and then my life will be even greater. I, I can't go through that. Did you know that Jesus told his disciples, in this life, you're going to suffer? But he said, don't worry about it. If you suffer with me, guess what? We're going to reign with them. So in the process, they let down the nets. They caught a drought of fish, and an abundance of fish. Then Jesus departed. And he went on. And he comes across a man full of leprosy. I said, full of leprosy? That means they had to cover his entire body. This man was afflicted. This man was uncomfortable. This man was in shame. This man was in a place, a dark place in his life where he could not even be seen in public. Because if you were a leper during those times and you came out in public, just like the woman issued blood, she had been found out that she was leaking in public that was stoned her to death. The same way with an individual who has leprosy in their body all over their skin, they were facing a jeopardy of being thrown, stoned to death. But because of this man heard about Jesus. It doesn't say this, but evidently he heard about Jesus. Because if you read the story, he said it came to pass when he was in a certain place in the city. He had to be in a position of the outcast of the, near the city where people that were sick with affliction and leprosy were ostracized, left by themselves. He had to come to that place in a certain city. He's a man full of leprosy, seeing Jesus, fell on his face. You know what he's talking about? He humbled himself. He's willing to bow down himself to a savior he didn't even know. And here it is, we know about Jesus and we won't even bow down. We confess to be children of God and still won't bow down and worship. Why? I can come to the house of God and the man of God say, I want everybody to bow down and worship. Well, he ain't going to do it. Everybody ain't going to do that. Why? Because I haven't been taught how to worship. If you've never been taught how to worship, you ain't going to worship. This man wouldn't even talk, how to, but he knew how to worship. And it says that he fell on his face and besought him and said, Lord, if thou wilt, wilt, can thou make me clean? A cry for help. I'm tired of being in abuse. I'm tired of having these thoughts in my head that's not of God. I'm tired of all this self-mutilation. I'm tired of all this doubt, this pain, this agony I've been going through for all these years. I'm tired of it, God. It's just like leprosy, God. It got all over me and got me in a dark place in my mindset where I can't see the break of day because I'm in darkness. I'm stuck. And God is saying, even in that place, I hear the desperation of your cry. He said he besought him. And he inquired of him, desired to want to know him. We must seek Jesus, inquire after him, acquaint ourselves with him, and reckon the discoveries he made to us of Christ by the gospel, the most acceptable and welcome discoveries that could make that could, he could ever make. We must humble ourselves before him as this leper, seeing Jesus fell on his face. We must be ashamed of our pollution. And in the sense of it, it blush, blush to lift our face before the holy Jesus. We must earnestly desire to be cleansed from our defilement and cured of the diseases of sin in our lives and render us unfit, unfit for the communication with God. Your pollution makes you unfit to come before God. And when you get a revelation, we must firmly believe that Christ's ability and sufficiency is able to cleanse us. Lord, if thou wilt make me clean, though I am full of leprosy, no doubt is to be made of the merit and the grace of Christ. You know what I just read? Humility, 
recognizing the pollution in your life, the sin in your life, the habits in your life, the things that you know that God's not pleased with in your life that you do. The stuff you allow to come out of your mouth that shouldn't be coming out. All that stuff, he's saying we need to identify what it is in our life that's making us unclean. The leper knew what his condition was. He was unclean. But yet he had enough sense when Jesus came along to bow down and say, Lord, if you will it, make me clean. Because I don't want to stay in this condition anymore, God. I need deliverance. We have to be willing to tell God, God, I'm messed up. I need deliverance right now in my mind, in my heart, in my will, in my emotion. I need you to change me, oh God. Make me more and more like you. And God would do that. Because they look at this willingness. What is your will? You know how people die? They, they have their will of testament in place. You know what I'm talking about, brother? And they have their will of testament, right? So all their possessions and their vehicles, their assets, they will it to go to certain individuals in the family. And if you don't have a will in place and you pass away, your possession goes to the state. And God says, I left you a will in my, my will of the testament, the word. And in this will is everything you need to make you successful and prosperous in this life. And all you got to do is believe it by faith and receive it. If you don't have enough sense to tell God, God, I will my, my will to you, God, that you would come in. They're just saying, my storage is empty. Lord, I, I want you to come into me, fill me up. God going to do that. But he only does it with a willing person. If I'm not willing to be filled, I'll be empty. I'll continue to go through life as an empty vessel full of pollution and in wickedness and iniquity. I'll still be in a dark place living a Confucius lifestyle because I'm stuck in a place I can't dig myself out of. So many people have went down into a pit of despair. They got stuck down there. And God says, I'm trying to bring you up, but you keep holding on to the grave. My God. We got to get to the place. I'm tired of wearing the grave clothes. I'm tired of being stuck in a dark place in the grave. Lazarus in the tomb, four days stinking. Jesus shows up because he knew the law, according to the law, after three days, the spirit of man had left the body. And Jesus comes along because he knew that he's already dead. So now I have to show them a miracle. God wants to set you free today. But he can't set you free if you're not willing. I thought about something. What if Jesus came to Lazarus' tomb and he called Lazarus and Lazarus didn't come forth? Think about it. He calls Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. Nothing happens. Does that mean he's not God? Does it mean he doesn't have power? It wasn't the time. And God said to me, it wasn't the time. If he called and he didn't come forth, if he decided not to heal your loved one right now, it ain't the time. But I can do it. Because he said, be it done according to your faith. Whatever your faith is, trusting God to do in your life, God says, I will manifest my power just like he did with Lazarus. Come forth. The spirit came back into Lazarus and the body was awakened. Then he said, loose him of his grave clothes and let him go free. Why? Because until I get loose from the grave, I'll be stuck in the grave. If Jesus called Lazarus forth and Lazarus still stuck in the grave, guess what, y'all? He wouldn't have came out. Until Jesus gave the command, loose that man and let him go. Your condition, just like this leopard, God has the power to speak one word. He said, be thou clean. And this will call my attention in verse 14. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest 
and offer for thy cleansing according to Mo as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. If you read Leviticus, you find out it talks about the, the, the format where God had placed by Moses a law for if you're a leper to be cleansed, you got to go show yourself to the priest and bring an offering. It's a testament to God, what God has done in your body to deem you clean. So you can't be clean until God says you're clean. If you don't believe the word of God, you're not going to be clean from your situation. So as he told them, and I said, why did Jesus tell him, don't, don't tell nobody? God showed me something. He would have boasted in what had happened. Not only that, Jesus was not ready to be revealed of what he, had, what he is as a son of God. So he had to make him sure, hey, go show yourself to the priest. And then after that, if someone finds out about it, then it's okay. But I don't want you going testifying yet because it ain't the time for me to be revealed. But he went. As Jesus said, but so much, the more went the, the fame abroad of him. So it still spread. Even though Jesus didn't want it to be known, the fame of what he'd done still spread the more abroad. And a great multitude came together to hear and be healed by him of their infirmities. And as I come to a close, when you're doing the work of the kingdom, somebody's going to tell about it. I went to the hospital to visit Deacon Cannon two days in a row. First day, he could hardly talk, having trouble breathing. The Holy Spirit, me and Joanne within the room by ourselves. And I began to pray. I said, Lord, if it be thy will, I want you to touch his body, to restore his breathing, restore his strength, bring virtue, the power of the Holy Spirit into his body right now. God, see, when I die but live, declare the works of God. Within that same hour, he began to talk. They came and changed his oxygen level because it was too low. But once they gave him the oxygen he needed, all of a sudden now he's talking. He's tossing. He's moving. He's turning. He wasn't doing none of it at first. But all of a sudden now he's starting to become emotional because his body is responding to the word of God. I decreed the word over him. I said, be thou healed in Jesus' name. And then later on, his daughter came in. I'd been there for about two hours. And his daughter came in. And the Lord says, minister to all of them. The whole, even the ones that wasn't there, God said, send the word in the spirit to the whole family, that the family can receive healing. Now I begin to decree the word of God. And I said, Lord, you said, a heart at peace, give life unto the body. I decree and declare peace in their house in all of his children in his family in the name of Jesus and guess what it manifested the next day I came back he's up eating he's sitting up he's talking he's watching T.D. Jakes I tell you what when you trust God at his word never alone at thy will I will let down my net and God will do a miracle in your situation to prove himself as God that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think According to his power, once you stand out of the room. So I come to encourage you today. You have to encourage yourself in the word of God. If you want strength today, you need to begin to encourage yourself. Lord, I thank you for your strength. You need a miracle. Lord, I thank you for the miracles. You need deliverance. God, I thank you for deliverance. You need to be set free from a strong cold, a, a habit that's not of God. It doesn't matter what it is. God said you got to begin to open your mouth and tell God, thank you for the deliverance in the area of my life. I need you the most. And God says your miracle is in motion. Your miracle is in motion because I hear the desperation of your cry. And God says, I'm answering you. 
according to your faith. So you lift your hands all over the room. I want you to repeat after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my desperation, my cry that comes up before you. And I ask God right now that you move in my situation, in my family, in my sick loved one, that you heal and deliver in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you have the power to do it, God. That's a touch myself, God, that you heal me of my backsliding ways, of my sinful ways, and that you cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I ask, Lord God, that you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Come on, give God a hand praise as you take your seats. Amen. I live my awesome, hand awesome. In Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Unto you. you reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. If you know it, sing it with me. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship, I worship and I want to tell you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Tell me one more time, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Jesus. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Listen, listen, listen. Let's give God a praise for that word. Hallelujah. Everybody standing on your feet. If you can, if you can. We, we got some time. We got some time. I just... I, I, I want... Pastor Charles prayed, you prayed the sinner's prayer. Amen. I want everybody that's been broken. If you will come to this altar. I want I want I want I want God said restoration is in the house. Spread out along the altar. altar.
God said restoration is in effect. Ooh. I love you, Jesus. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. I want to tell you to tell Oh Lord, oh Lord, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Listen. Charles was preaching and I was reading through some things and uh, I saw a war of destruction uh, and, and it took my mind to what God said he was telling Joshua my servant Moses is dead and this is when he put Joshua's entire in the book of Joshua and God has given us power to conquer some things. But if there's brokenness, if my car is broken and I'm planning to go out of town, it's not going to make it. God said, I need to restore the core of the problem Lift your hand if you, 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 you really want God to do something. If you could just lift one, hallelujah. I know some of y'all young people, y'all hands can go higher than that. Hallelujah. I know the older we get, the, the, the harder it is for us to put our shoulders up. But I'm looking at my Auntie Mamie right here, hands up higher than a whole lot of y'all young folks. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray right where you're standing. Right where you're standing. Right where you're standing. Do you believe God can restore you? I just want to know from, 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 from the believers, is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Listen, real softy musicians. Nothing happens. Nothing happens unless there's a blueprint. There's a blueprint. Something you want to do, something you want to do, something you want to do. And in your mind, you have to have it mapped out. But ain't nothing going to happen if you're just speaking about it. We say write it down, make it plain, and hallelujah. But in order for God to react, to what you're asking them for, you have to be determined, determined to make it. But if there's brokenness in your life, if there's brokenness in your life, it would affect, it will affect the progress in your life. Because we're going to look at the very thing that we want to do, but we can't because we, we think that we need this and we need that and we need this to make it happen. But I'm telling you right now, God would take nothing. God would take nothing and he'll make something out of it. I don't, it, don't, it don't matter what you're going through, pastor. Pastor, pastor, pastor. You don't understand. You, I see you got this and I see you got that. But there was a time I didn't have this and that. 
There was a time I worked check to check. And I've still got that mindset. I'm working check to check. I'm not blowing this and blowing that. Hallelujah. But God is working this and that out. Because me and my wife, we had plans that if we worked hard enough and we used the little that we had, God would give us a whole lot that we can handle. So let me show you the blueprint, the blueprint that God is about to do right now here because if you already made up sometime that just simply need to be restoration. Do you hear me? Restoration starts by how determined you are to make it. I, I recognize where I'm broken at. You recognize where you're broken at. You recognize where you're, where, where you're tripping up and you're making mistakes at. You recognize all of those things in your life. But the one thing that really needs to take place is that I recognize it. What am I going to do about it? Here's the thing, Pastor Charles. The enemy said, now what you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? And because you can't see how to fix it. As a songwriter said, fix it, Jesus, like you said you would. You have to stop ministering to yourself. Remember mama's ministry. Remember mama, grandmama praying and granddaddy's praying and, and how mama weeped all night and she believed God for this and that and we didn't know how we were going to make it. Uh, I wanted new shoes, but if she got the shoes, she'll go broke for me. But somehow she got me the shoes. So... Being broken is just simply saying, Lord, make me over. Hallelujah, Lord, make me over again. Make my mind over because I, I, I'm troubled by what recently happened. I'm troubled by what I'm going through right now, God. I need a makeover because if you don't make me over, God, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose sight of what I'm trying to do. I'm going to lose sight of what I've been trying. I'm going to lose sight of a, I'm struggling in the area to make it, God. But I, I need you to help me, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The first thing that has to happen... The first thing that has to happen is that I can't speak to you and if I'm not asking God to fix me. You see what I'm saying? See, because if I'm saying the same thing goes for each and every last one of y'all. First, you need to be fixed yourself before you can say, God, fix this person and fix that person. First of all, God, I need you to fix me. Now, God, I need for you to fix him. I need for you to fix her. I need for you to fix her. Him, him, her, her, her. Him, him, her. And then, and only then, fate will begin to manifest and work in your favor. Listen. Listen, Tawanda, come here once. I want to show y'all something. I want to show you something. Merlin, come here. Robin, come here. I want to show you something. And I'm, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you the effects of what, how I've seen y'all grow. You see what I'm saying? The effects of how I've seen y'all grow. And the examples that y'all have been around y'all children. I want to show you something. Tawanda kids, raise your hand. You've seen mama pray. You've seen mama pray. You've seen mama pray. Do you remember mama praying? Do you know how to pray? Do you know how to pray? Okay, now listen. Ten years ago, Tawanda came to this ministry. She'd been to other ministries, she, I know. And, but when she came to this ministry, she was praying for her children. I saw her brokenness. I see her children. All but one is grown, right? All but a couple, three, two, two is grown. And they're grown. And I see, I, I see 
Some of them are still home. And believe me, they're, they're, they're working their way out of the house. But mama, you got to let them go. See what I'm saying? So here's the thing. That, that even, even the ones that are not grown out of the house, it takes... You, you raise, I saw you raise the kids by yourself. Your, your mother helped you a little, your mother helped your son, but you raised them without their father being there in the household. You raised her with the father being in the household. You raised yours most of your life without the fathers being in the household, but you're married now. Amen. You've been married how long? Ten years. Ten years. Yep, ten years. Ten years. Same length of the church. Amen. Amen. And Merla, eight years. I know I married you, but I can't remember. Don't tell me you forgot. Amen. No, it, ain't, it ain't been eight years yet. Four years. Okay, okay, four years. Okay. It seemed like it was longer than that. 18 years. Okay, it's been about four years, so y'all got 22 years in. Amen. So I, I'm saying this to say this right here. I'm saying this to say this right here is that y'all see how mama them made it this far? You see how your mother made it this far? You see how your mama made it this far? And I'm not, I don't see none of your kids here, but I, and they probably watch, watch this later on, but they see how you made it this far. I seen you cry in pain. I seen you cry in pain. I seen you cry in pain. I seen it. When they were so young, they probably didn't even understand it, why you were crying. But I know those tears was the building process. And this is how you guys made it over. Now, what needs to happen now is that you got three boys. Now you got grandchildren being born now. And, and, and so, therefore, what, what's happening now is that your sons are watching you. It's watching you. And, and, and how you see, how you treat your mother and how you love your mother is how you post to love on the woman that you're going to choose to marry. You hear what I'm saying? The same thing, the same thing. You seen you they see they seen you cry, they seen you do all these other things. But God has brought y'all from a mighty long way. I need y'all to give yourself a hand praise right there. And I'm using y'all as an example because one day y'all are going to be where they're standing at. And God is making y'all lower because mama can come to you and say, Look, son. I've been through some rough times, but I made it. He brought me through. You can say, look, daughter, I've been through some rough times, but look what he brought me from. He can do it for you too. The same thing you can say to your sons and your daughters, that God will bring you through all of that. When God is making you over, it's not going to be easy at all because there's going to come a time where mama and daddy can't help you. Mama and daddy couldn't help you. Hallelujah. Where it was made easy, mama and daddy ain't going to always be there to help you. When the money gets funny, your change gets strange, God is going to be the only source of your strength. God is going to be the only source of your strength. Y'all go stand back. And I'm, I'm about through because we got we to gotta go. But listen, Mamie, Lane, Rosada, I forget your name, mother. What's your name? What's your name? Uh-huh. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. I remember you told me last week. Uh, Ruby, I'm, I'm, I want to I wanna minister to y'all right now. I want to say something to y'all all together, just all together. That everything that y'all are dealing with right now, God said, I'm giving you the mortar and the straw to build from it. To build from it. To build from it. You, you're going to build from your pain. You're going to build from what you're dealing with. You're going to build from it. Hallelujah. God said, I have downloaded a strategy in a plan to help you through everything that you're going through. Everything that you're dealing with. Everything that's hurting you. Every heartbeat that you're making right now. God said, I've downloaded the strategy to, in the plan to help you get through it. To help you get through it. To help you to show you the way out of it. To help you show you the way out of it. The plan ain't for everybody. Ain't for everybody. The plan ain't for everybody. 
Because what God showed you, Lane, he probably won't show your wife. Your wife is just going to be there to help you along the strategy, the process. What God showed you, he ain't going to show nobody else. He's just going to help you through the process. And everybody going to start seeing and manifest. What God showed you, he's going to help you through the process. He's going to help you build. He's going to help you restore. He's going to help you make things happen. What God shows you, Ruby, God is going to move all of that hurt, all of that hurt, all of that hurt out of your life and restore some things in your life. I just need somebody to embrace Ruby right now. Would somebody just embrace her? Thank you, Jesus. Man, I, I need to talk to you and her. But I just, I just want to let you know, look. Look, brother. Whatever you put your mind to right now, it's going to take you stepping up to the plate and make things happen for you and your life. God said, look, I put before you a tree. I'm not going to allow anything to fall off of it except you shake it. Except you shake it. The wind can come and blow and you can just wait there for it to fall. But God said, ain't nothing going to fall except you shake. So that's saying that you're going to have to put in some work to make it happen. But when you get finished putting in work, I'm going to tell you, you're going to look back on it and say, I thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength to shake the tree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A definite thing right here. I love all of y'all. Y'all young people right here. God want to use all of y'all to take y'all to another level. And again, I definitely, I need to talk to y'all before y'all leave. And there's, there's another level. There's an anointing in this place that's about to be birthed. Amen. There's an anointing about, about to be birthed. And, and auntie, I just want you to be strong. God is bringing you back in here in a mighty way, in a mighty way, in a mighty way, in a mighty way. Somebody need to give God praise. Listen, auntie, I talked to you yesterday, may not be ready, but God said, you're at the home base. You got the bat in your hand. And there's a picture out there. And God said, I need for you to hit a home run for the home family. And I'm going to tell you what the picture is doing. The picture is trying to throw sickness. He's trying to throw a curveball, blindness. He's trying to blindside the family. He's trying to do a whole lot. But God said, you're, um, you're the next up to knock the ball out the ballpark. And look, look, every, 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 every uh, baseball player don't always use everybody else's bat. Because everybody's bat has a weight to it has a weight to it. There's a weight to the bat that God has given you that everybody can handle. It might be too light for Lane. It may be too light for Charles or too heavy for Charles. But it's just right for you. So every ball that is thrown your way, God said, you up there, get ready to hit a home run for the family. Hallelujah. It's time for... It's, I'm, I need for you to hit cancer out the ballpark. I need for you to hit diabetes out the ballpark. I need for you to hit high blood pressure out the ballpark. I need for you to hit some home runs so that our children's children won't have to deal with what we're dealing with. That's what I'm saying. Hallelujah. 
Come on, let's give God praise. I, I just can't keep, I just can't keep, I just can't. Y'all can go take a seat, but I just can't get my mind off of what God is about to do for you, Lane. 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 I just can't, I just can't. You are so open right now that I'm, I can almost see the next chapter in your life. The next chapter in your life. Because whenever you read the book, there's always a next chapter. No writer writes a book and just write it to an end. They'll write a chapter, give it a name. And then they'll write chapter two, give it another name. God said, in this, it's time for you to start naming it. Naming it, naming it, naming it, naming it, naming it, Lane, name it, Lane. Whatever you open your mouth to say, this is a new chapter. A new chapter. So therefore, because it's a new chapter, things are made new in this chapter. Because what I went through in the last chapter is going to be better in the next chapter. I, we got to declare it. But next chapter is going to be better in the... In the next chapter, it's going to be better in the next chapter. I've read books and listen to stories from rags to riches. We saw those stories and we saw people say they've done things unbelievable. But look, your anointing is different. Your anointing is different. Your level of uh, what you got to do on this level is far difficult for me to even try to reach that level. So the shoes that you are wearing, I am unable to walk in those shoes. But because your book has been unveiled to me, I feel a little bit jealous. Because I want it myself. But I want to let you know right now that that, 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 that chapter is only for you. That chapter is only for you. And what God has for you is only written for you. And because he revealed it to me, I, I, I just want God to bless you. I just want God to bless you. But I tell you this much. Every serpent that would try to grab a hold on you in your walk, See, because, look at the time, 7.20, you got three minutes. The Bible says, the steps of a good man are ordered. Listen, listen. Ordered by the Lord. David said, Lord, be a light unto my footsteps. The soldiers in the Bible days, when they marched to battle at night, they wore lanterns on their legs, on their ankles. And the reason why they wore lanterns, Minister Harris, is because they can see the serpents in the grass. They need to see where their foot was going to step because the enemy will lay traps for you. But God has told me to tell you, when he orders our steps... He have ordained our steps. And when God has ordained your steps, uh, it is definite that you're going to make it. Uh, whichever way you walk, uh, you're going to walk over serpents. You're going to try out over your enemy in every obstacle that will be set in your way. God said, I gave you the steps stepping orders uh, to step uh, over your and what's going to make the enemy mad is that the people 
that feel that you're not going to make it. The people that, that feel like you're not going to make it. Or even, even the doubt that even probably ran through your mind. God said, I'm going to put the doubt to shame. I'm going to make the doubt that came to your mind, I'm going to make it upset. I'm going to make it leave the building. Because look, he has given you stepping orders. And when you step, you step, you walk, and you're moving. It's not about, I'm going to walk a little bit and stop. God said, look, don't be afraid. God has given you a lion in your spirit. David couldn't go up against a lion if he didn't have lion in him. You hear me? David couldn't go up against a bear if he didn't have a little bear in him. That's the thing right there. You have a lion in you. You have a bear in you. Hallelujah. And a lion and a bear, they're just like enemies. But every time the enemy comes up against you, you got to storm your claws. You got to make a roar in your spirit by giving God a praise. Because you can't be a king and you're afraid. A lion, a lion, a lion don't back down off of a fight. When a lion is ready to go out of his prey, he has studied. He studied the prey. He studied the prey. He watches how the prey move, how it moves from this side. The prey will bow, down, bow his head down and eat from the earth and look up and see if anybody watching. But the lion got sense enough to stay a little bit lower than the eyesight. So, let that lion that's in you roar. Every time, every time you feel that there's something in your way, God said, I just want to hear you roar. Because he said, I inhabit the praises of my people. So, while, 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 while you at home by yourself at times, uh, just, just praise him with a Thank you, Jesus. Because that's when, that's when he knows, that's when he knows I have now gained access because my son calleth me through praise. So, when I say blessings come into me, see, we're saying God come into me, see. So we ask in God, we allow God to be intimate with us. Intimacy. Woo! So, so, while you're walking, while, you, while, 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 you, while, you, while you're getting re yourself ready, keep your head up. A bow down head can't see where it's going. That's why the, 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 the the zebras, when they eat, they'll lift their head up right away. They're always on watch. Gideon, God told Gideon like this. He said, look, every man that lappeth, that's one I want you to keep. Because a dog, when a dog is licking this, licking this water, eating this food, you can't get close to him. Because even while a dog is eating, he's not distracted. Right. Try to take the bowl from a dog when he's having a good meal. He's he see you coming. I don't care if you come up from behind him. His senses is while he's eating. It has been in, enlightened and, and has been taken to another level. So I'm saying to you right now that no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper because when the enemy comes from your back, there's mercy. When the enemy try to hit you from your side and your front, there's grace. But here's the thing, you're surrounded. But what the enemy don't understand that when you have grace and mercy around you, they're forgetting about favor. 
They, they are forgetting about the favor that God has placed over your life. So the favor of God is so intimate. Oh, I'm walking in the favor of God. And so because I'm walking in the favor of God, I shall fear no evil for thou art with me. Your chapter is going to be better than your last chapter. Get ready to live it. Come on, give God praise. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But listen, I, I, I don't know, but Ruby, April, Ruby, April, April, if you could, and if Ruby, if you okay with it, could y'all share phone numbers? Because I need for y'all, God said I need for both of y'all to talk. Amen. You share something with me. Go ahead. Huh? No, the Ruby right here. The Ruby. I, I will call her Rosada. Amen. I, I, Ruby is a nickname, right, Auntie? Amen. But that's her name. Amen. So I need for, I need for you. She's going to minister to you. Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody, stand. We're going to be dismissed. Pastor Charles, if you want to dismiss us, amen. You brought the word on today, and I'm allowed you to dismiss us on today. I want to thank everyone for joining us via Facebook Live, and um, we thank all of y'all for joining us. I just want to say God bless you. We love you. Facebook, YouTube, however you're going to watch it or watching it, amen. I want y'all to be lifted up, and I declare that you are healed spiritually, mentally, and physically, that God is going to give you your strength back over your life, in your life. Restoration has come to your house. In Jesus' name, go ahead, Charles. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your presence in this place, oh God, how you move by your spirit. We pray that the word spoken today, oh God, will marinate in our hearts to bring change in our lives for the better. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Rest with and abide with us henceforth, now and forevermore, till we meet again. Now, Lord God, be gracious. Lord, turn your face towards us. Lift your countenance upon us and give us peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed.